Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us for another Foundation Gratitude Day webinar. Um, if this is your first time joining us, my name is Nicole Hankwitz. I am the Foundation's Major Gifts Officer, and I want to welcome you. So the purpose of these webinars is to talk about uh, what McLaren is doing to transform healthcare in our community and the role that McLaren Greater Lansing Foundation plays in that transformation. I'm very excited for today's guests. We've got Dr. Michael McKenna, who is the Executive Vice President and Chief Medical Officer for McLaren Healthcare, and Shandan Gupte, Vice President of Clinical Excellence and Research at McLaren Healthcare. Today, we're going to talk about McLaren Center for Research and Innovation, which supports research throughout the entire McLaren healthcare system, including right here in Greater Lansing. Just a couple of things I wanna go over before we get started. So please feel free to ask questions in the Q&A box. I will keep track of those questions and we will uh, ask them and get answers at the end of the presentation. Also, this webinar is being recorded. So if we will share it on our social media accounts and you'll receive a copy as well, in case you wanna share it with someone who may be interested in learning more about the foundation and our campaign for care. Lastly, if you do want more information about our campaign for care, please visit our website at mglcampaignforcare.com. With that, I am excited to introduce Foundation Vice President Lynn Grefor, Dr. Michael McKenna, and Shandon. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Nicole, and thank you so much, Dr. McKenna and Chandan, for being here with us today. I could not be more excited to talk about McLaren's research programs and how they are impacting um, the people in our communities and um, all of the wonderful things and innovations that are coming out of the, of the research program. So again, welcome and thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you. I was wondering if we could really just kind of start with a broad overview of, um, of what research means at McLaren. Uh, were we showing slides with this, Shannon, or is this, we're just... I think we're just going to be... Oh, yeah. oh there they are. Okay, um, that can lead off. I think that a couple of things. I've been here approximately eight years and in over eight years, but when I came here, uh, McLaren is already doing a significant amount of, of research, and especially research that we would consider, you know, uh, basically local and community based. Uh, and I think that one of the things that we realized is that for McLaren to really get the outcomes that they wanted for uh, the patients that were privileged to serve is that we were gonna to have to figure out how do we get much more organized around research uh, because it's a known way to improve patient outcomes. And so if you look at organizations that have strong research programs, the patients that are treated in those organizations have better outcomes uh, than patients who get care at routine sites. Uh, that uh, if you were at the Carmanos lecture, uh, that you would have heard that, that we know for sure that patients who get cancer care if they get it as part of clinical trials, that their outcomes are significantly better than if they get just routine care. And so we wanted to take that to a different level uh, throughout McLaren to provide an integrated and innovative therapies to patients, no matter where they were at in McLaren. And so we decided to centralize what we call McLaren Center for Research and Innovation so that we could take clinical trials and types of patient-centered research and expand it throughout our system so that uh, hopefully in, 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 with many of these projects that no matter where you're a patient in McLaren, you're gonna have the opportunity uh, to get into a research trial. That's largely been obtained in regards to oncology and now we're working through that in other areas such as cardiology, orthopedic surgery and some of these other areas. And that's what we wanna talk about today. We're not going to be focusing as much on the cancer aspect as, as much as we're going to be talking about, you know, these other aspects of, of health care. Uh, could we go to the next slide? And maybe, Shannon, you can comment on uh, research enrollment. And, you know, this isn't even since we began. Sure. Uh, I'd like to sort of restate what Dr. McKenna just said. We have, McLaren has a very strong commitment to research and it's our mission to bring state-of-the-art advances uh, to our patients at McLaren, including those at McLaren Greater Lansing. 
uh, we strive to be the best in the nation. So, um, and with that in mind, we've created this centralized uh, process or operations where we have a hub and spoke uh, system. We have central uh, research uh, administration, but the sites is are where the research actually occurs. Our physicians uh, practice we and you know enroll patients at the site. Uh, this is just a slide that shows the growth that we have seen since um, you know 2018. And as you can see, we've had exponential growth in enrollment uh, in our clinical trials. And that speaks volumes to how our patients and our physicians have embraced research. I think that one of the things when we talk about this is that as we describe what research is, you know, we have things that we call, you know, clinical trials that could be therapeutic. We have things that are called patient-centered research, which may be uh, where a physician has an idea that they want to see if it could improve outcomes. Uh, and it's not sponsored by a drug company. It's not sponsored by, uh, you know, some outside stores. Uh, but it could actually lead to a significant benefit for patients. And so that patient-centered research is something that we're really interested in uh, getting uh, more of it within McLaren. And that's where research funding uh, becomes important because the physician or the other, it may be a nurse, it could be a variety of different clinical providers that are doing this, need to have financial support and, and, it, and enable to do appropriate patient-centered research. And that's why we're creating, you know, sort of what we call research funding uh, to help uh, our scientists, clinicians uh, to uh, do some of these types of things. And so we're, we're actually committing, uh, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars internally uh, to get this started. And I'm sure Shannon's going to talk a little bit more about this whole process. Uh, but this is where I think the real opportunity is we can continue to drive clinical trials with vendors and pharmaceutical companies, and that's great. But I think where the real success is gonna be as we can do patient-centered uh, trials, and as we can do stuff that supports our graduate medical education, it supports our nursing departments, it's all these myriad of other things that aren't funded normally, uh, that we have to basically raise money or pay it out of, um, you know, as a McLaren cost. Uh, and that's why, you know, we're here today is because we think there's this real opportunity uh, to help drive a lot of this type of research. Absolutely. And I have to believe that if it's the physician that you know, or the nurse that you know, or the center that you're familiar with, that's, that's talking to you about getting involved with the research program, your comfort level is much higher than if it's, you know, a stranger or, you know, you have to go out of town or you have to, you know, fly to state or, or what have you. So having this type of opportunity local in the community with providers that we know and trust to me seems like such a huge benefit for um, our patients and for our community. Without a doubt. And, and then what's funny is we tend to think that advances in healthcare all come from the ivory towers, all come from a university somewhere. And there's numerous stories about that. Like I still remember my background as a gastroenterologist and it was 25 years ago, I was at a small community hospital in the Chicago area. And I was in the doctor's lounge talking to a general surgeon and he was telling me how they were gonna start doing laparoscopic gallbladder surgery. And of course I was appalled. I said, you can't take out a gallbladder with a laparoscope. What are you thinking? And he said, no, no, there's several community hospitals in different parts of the country uh, that the surgeons were already working together uh, to figure out how to do this, that they felt it was safe and effective. And uh, they had read some of the literature and gotten some of the information. It was just all of a sudden uh, create, got in a life of its own. And so these surgeons, uh, largely in community systems, uh, started doing laparoscopic gallbladder surgery. And now, of course, everybody's getting it done that way, probably 90 9% of gallbladder surgery is done laparoscopically. And I would have told you at the time that that was almost malpractice to consider doing it, but it was all driven in the community. And that's just one example of many uh, things that I can think of, of where uh, people had a good idea, uh, they were appropriately trained, they had the support and they put it into place and patient care was forever effective. And so that's why I think research is so important 
And that's why our support of physician researchers or physician scientists, and I shouldn't just say physician because we're really reaching out to all clinical providers, you know, whether they're uh, medical students and, and uh, residents, our own physicians, but really have to remember uh, nursing is going to become critically important at this. And there's been significant advances that have occurred because of nursing research. We also have things like in pharmacy, we have you know, respiratory therapists, all sorts of different areas where we need to support uh, clinical research and can get the, you know, significant advances. Absolutely. And one of the things that, you know, that one of the stories we, we like to tell in this community with, with the new hospital that we're building, um, you know, by the MSU campus is that you can get the best, best care here locally. And I think this research program and the trials that we get started in, in funding our local providers really just um, emphasizes that you don't have to, you know, fly across the country to enroll in a clinical trial. Um, we're bringing all of that right here. We want people to be able to stay in their community um, when they have receive any type of diagnosis and they're getting treatment. So it really goes um, hand in hand with all of the, the wonderful things that the foundation has supported up till now to keep care local. So I just think that's so important. Well, it is. And that's why uh, one of the areas that we're doing clinical trials is in neurosciences. And it specifically has to do with stroke. And we're looking at how to bring uh, Lansing uh, into this model. And there's a lot of things going on with um, Sparrow and other things that I don't want to get into today. But if we look at our neuroscience program and the neurointerventions that are done, we can trace, they're getting some of the top results in the country, but more importantly, when you look at it from a clinical research, they're the largest enrollers in the world in several of the clinical trials. Okay? That's amazing. If they're not number one, they're number two. And so this is you know, a small community system uh, that has embraced research. And it's not so much that they're able to do the trials, it's we're able to get these outcomes that are top decile, best in the country. And so you think about it from a patient's point of view and you happen to get into a McLaren hospital that's doing this, you're gonna be exposed to the highest level of care that you can get, the highest level of research that's currently being done in interventional uh, neurology. And that's what we're trying to do, not only just in neurosciences, not just in oncology, we want that in cardiology, orthopedic surgery, uh, you name it, we're trying to expand clinical research into all these different areas because we're so committed uh, that this is what's going to be the driving difference for us as an organization. That's wonderful. Can you talk a little bit, so I, there's kind of two audiences here. There are the, the clinicians that might be interested in um, applying for research funding, and then there are the donors um, that we work with at the foundation that may be interested in helping to fund it. So could we kind of start off talking about the mechanism and process for someone, a clinician within the McLaren system that wishes to apply for a research grant? I'll have Shandon to deal with that. Sure. Uh, so I want to start off with saying that we do, as Dr. McKenna said, a research in multiple areas. So it's not just cardiology, neurology, uh, neurosciences, but in other areas like orthopedics. Uh, in, Lansing specifically has been at the forefront of doing research in orthopedics as well. And we have started clinical trials uh, at Lansing. Uh, our you know, faculty, our physicians, our uh, other providers at Lansing can do, you know, apply for funding through our research funding uh, committee. And these uh, applications are available throughout the year, but there are specific deadlines. Like we have uh, a deadlines coming up uh, every quarter. As you can see on your slide, uh, awards are then made quarterly. And this uh, these awards are available to everybody who is an employee, a McLaren affiliated employee, provider, resident, physician, or even fellows. So if you're looking for more information, we have a website, www.mclaren.org slash research funding. Uh, where you can get more information and application is available for submission. But we encourage everybody you know, who's interested in doing research to come early so we can support you. And uh, you know, we'd like uh, to in, you know, increase our fundings for these residents, obviously through our 
donors. And we have started having some really uh, great conversation with donors who um, understand that, you know, their gifts can make a huge impact in this arena. One of the questions I get asked most frequently is, are they able to direct their gifts? So if they have, for example, a history in their family of cardiovascular disease, and they really want to see their uh, donation go towards cardiovascular research, is that something, do we have a mechanism in place to do that? Absolutely. We can, we can direct our, the funds exactly for the purpose that the donor uh, wishes the research funds be directed towards. Uh, we have a system in place already where uh, we can earmark the funds for specific types of studies. Um, you know, they can even be as specific as not just the department, but it could be resident versus you okay. know, faculty. Wonderful. I think the limitations can be put on, and we're happy to do that. I mean, I think that uh, we don't need them to be, you know, unrestricted funds, although unrestricted funds are very helpful because it allows us to fund areas that maybe doesn't have a lot of the generous donors that some other areas do, you know, so I do think that uh, we shouldn't discourage, uh, you know, that that on unrestricted funds are, are still very helpful. We clearly want to respect donors uh, wishes and if they want it by disease specific, site specific, or even there's situations where it becomes physician specific that I've seen in the past, uh, then I think that that's all stuff we can absolutely work around. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, it reminds me a little bit about um, donors who like to give to scholarship funds. The more um, you know, broad you can keep it, the easier it is for us to disperse it at the at the back end. So if you get too narrow, it gets a little bit tricky. But um, obviously, always we would you know respect the donor's wishes. Absolutely. Are there any? Um, you, you mentioned orthopedics. Are there any research studies happening locally here in the Lansing area um, that you might want to highlight? There is an, there's one current clinical trial that's, uh, it's, it's an orthopedic study. It's the uh, triathlon. It's a, uh, for patients who have had artificial knee replacements. So this is a, a very interesting study. It looks at, you know, how well this artificial knee performs. So certainly, um, you know, our Lansing population that's involved in, you know, it wants to get involved in any of these research studies can approach us and it's a clinical trial, it's a national trial. So certainly we're bringing national studies to our uh, Lansing population. I think the other thing we have to mention is that there's, uh, we have physicians at all of our sites who do research and from their office, for instance, so that they, they may not be part now directly of MCRI, but we are finding as time goes by and as we get, you know, even better uh, at doing research as an organization, uh, that a lot of physicians are turning over their research for us to manage because it's, it's really administratively, there's a lot of bells and whistles and things that you've got to do uh, to get it done. And so we like to work with our docs and, and uh, but there's, I think as you look at physicians, there's just some that very much like doing research and are much more research aligned. And we have others that just don't have an interest or uh, just haven't spent the time to figure out how can I do this? It seems like it's more than uh, they want to take on. And so that's why we're trying to, to focus on how can we become more physician centric and really help to reach out those people that are sort of borderline, you know, should I, do I want to do it? How, how can we make it easy for them to get involved? And so uh, that's exactly what we're doing. And that's why within residencies with our, with our uh, graduate medical education, research is a very important part of their training. So we hope to get people you know, early in their course, uh, get them interested in research and then start supporting them right away when they get out into practice uh, so that we can continue them as a lifelong learner and, and doing stuff like research uh, as part of their practice. Absolutely. So I know you guys have seen a lot of uh, research studies come and, and be conducted and um, I, you probably get lots of outcome at the end. Is there any specific study or program that has really, um, you know, you remember as having a really major impact on patient outcomes? Uh, 
I can think of one, Dr. McKenna, is CardioMEMS. Is um, as many of you might know, it is a. It started off as a research study for congestive heart failure patients, and uh, has now become standard of care. Uh, so, and McLaren was one of the participants for this big study. Uh, and there are other similar device uh, studies, stent, you know, drug eluding stent studies that we've all uh, we've participated in. Uh, we brought these uh, cut this cutting edge technology to our patients before it was available to anybody. So I think that that I think is a very important piece of research. And for those patients who want to participate, they always are concerned about research saying, oh, this is, you know, this is new. Nobody has done this before, but all eyes are on the patient when you participate as a research subject. Uh, you get the, uh, you, you know, you get everybody looking at your data probably more often than you would think that happens. So um, you get a lot of attention as a research subject. So I would encourage anybody who's watching to consider participating as a you know, research subject in clinical trials, you get the best clinical outcomes. Sorry, Dr. McKenna, please go ahead. Well, I think there's two areas. One is in neurosciences, once again, uh, I was amazed at the study of uh, you know, people who come in with uh, aneurysms and that are leaking and currently you watch them and then uh, they started being, you know, hey, you, you, if you decompensated or fell into certain categories, you'd have to go to surgery, but really high risk surgery. There, a lot of uh, damage could be done from surgery and, and certainly death. And now all of a sudden they're coming out with these novel treatments where it's all done, you know, through radiology, intravascular, in other words. And there, this device came out that would literally allow them to pack the aneurysm with material and not only stop the bleeding, but permanently what we call a blake the aneurysm. And, you know, the patient went from death's door to, you know, in a sense being cured from it, you know, in, in a single sitting, you know, and it's, or we saw that, uh, you know, early in the course of some of this neuroscience where people would, uh, you know, would go come in and they're beyond the table with dense paralysis and they would slip a device up there that uh, no one else had access to and they could remove the blood clot and the patient literally, by the time they were going out of the, into the recovery room, uh, were moving their arm, were starting to talk, all these things were already getting better. And this is the type of stuff that other people, unfortunately, were having it somewhere else in the country and didn't have access to it because they did not have this commitment uh, to doing this research. The other thing I would tell you is Overall, this is not a money-making process for an organization like McLaren. Uh, even though you know the devices are donated, we still have lots and lots of costs. It is something that we choose. We try to make this break even, but it's not exceptionally profitable anywhere in the country. And so that's once again why we depend on donors because we're not making a big margin that allows us to they have all sorts of funding to do this. This is almost like running a, well, I shouldn't say a college, but it's, it's much more like an educational type arrangement than it is a profitable service line that we talk about. And, and seriously it becomes an issue for us that we have to get donations and get support in order to grow and do some of the things that we're trying to do. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's a commitment on McLaren's part. Um, and it's a commitment that, you know, we, we feel strongly that we can re reach out to the community and ask for their help. And, um, you know, I, like I said, I've had lots of conversations with donors who just, who didn't know, who didn't know this was something that McLaren did. And so we're excited to spread the word about that. Um, I did want to mention, or, or Chanda, maybe you can touch on, there's a wonderful research, uh, resource for people that are more interested in learning more about a research program, which is the Research Matters magazine, um, which is both online and printed. Can you talk yes. a little bit about that? So we have a quarterly newsletter. It's called Research Matters, as Lynn just mentioned. It's available uh, on our website. Uh, please feel free to browse through those. Um, it talks, it highlights the different areas of research. It highlights our researchers as well, you know, our residents, our faculty, uh, different uh, uh, 
interesting research studies that are being conducted throughout our system. So uh, we certainly use that as a platform to share what we do. We share, you know, use that platform to share with others about what, uh, you know, what is coming up next. We talk about all of the federal regulations that govern research. And for uh, those who might not know, research is highly, highly regulated. And so we have to uh, manage all of those pieces as in terms of our communication. Resident Corner is a part of our research newsletter and we have several uh, articles every quarter that talk about what our residents are doing. Um, as you know, Lansing is a hub of our, you know, graduate medical education. We have a large group of residents and fellows there. So uh, we do showcase them as well periodically through that. Wonderful. So just a general question for both of you, if you don't mind. Um, in general, what are you most excited about when it comes to McLaren's research program? I can tell you I'm really excited about this relationship that we have with our foundations. I think uh, this is new for research. Um, this is uh, not, we have never done this before. We love partnering up with our foundation, um, you know, and members uh, so that we can showcase what we do. So you can, and we can share with you our successes. And uh, the more support we get from the community, uh, the more we will be able to grow and bring uh, studies to the community and not like Dr. McKenna said, you don't have to go to always to a university. You could go to a community hospital and get the same care, the same access to devices and medication, investigational medications that um, people always think are not available to community locations. Absolutely. And I think that uh, you know, obviously, I've been a big supporter of this. When I look back to <clears throat> where we started and where we've come to and where we're headed, I think that what we've done is that it sort of helped to transform our organization into becoming much more of a learner organization. And we see that by our commitment uh, to not only graduate medical education and all the other learning aspects of that, but we're sort of leveraging research as being something that's part of our DNA, that we know that where we're headed is that you can't do appropriate patient care if you're not constantly doing research and trying to use science and evidence-based type therapies uh, to uh, help you get better outcomes. We're extremely focused as an organization on outcomes. And I think that that's really helped us advance quality. I think that research, once again, uh, just becomes one of those differentiating factors that I think that if you look at us and compare what we're doing to most other, you know, community-based programs, I think we're far ahead. And I think where we're at now is clearly that uh, we have a lot of unmet needs and we need to figure out how do we do that? How do we get to do more research? How do we have some of the additional hospitals that aren't doing a lot of research how do we bring them on board? And so I think that there's plenty of opportunities and it's just how do we align with different uh, areas in order to get that done? And that's exactly what we're doing. Absolutely. Well, and um, you know, kind of tying that back to the foundation's efforts, um, we do have an event here locally coming up in Lansing on October 14th called Cocktails for a Cause. Um, it's an event where we're bringing local bars and restaurants um, together to create signature cocktails and attendees will be able to taste those cocktails and have entertainment and some, um, some nice heavy hors d'oeuvres and all of the proceeds from that event is going to benefit the research program. And so we're excited not only to be able to hopefully contribute some money, but also raise awareness about this program and what we're doing um, so that people know that, you know, McLaren really is just this is one more commitment to making sure that our patients get the very best care. So I'm excited about that. And Shannon, I know you'll be there. So thank you yes. for that. And Dr. McKenna, we'll send you pictures. I know you're not available, but I apologize. To that. I mean, I would normally be there. That's the type sure. of research I like doing, you know, tasting some cocktails. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> uh, no, but I think that I can't. My son is actually getting married and I'm going to be out of town for that. Otherwise, I'd be there also. 
Well, yeah, no, that's that's a, a, a very good excuse. And like I said, we'll make sure we send you some pictures. So I appreciate that. No, I appreciate you doing that and, and starting this uh, fundraising for uh, research. I think it's going to help set the stage and uh, with other foundations throughout McLaren uh, to do that. Because, you know, the other thing is just my personal bias is that we, you know, as foundations, we can raise money for equipment and for buildings. And I think that's really important. I'm not diminishing that at all. <laughs> but, uh, you know, an equipment is important. But when you start talking about funding things that may lead to fundamental differences in how we deliver care, and when you start, to, you know, we have to remember we're first and foremost a clinical enterprise. And what we do is take care of patients and try to get them better or keep them in good health. And when you think about it, the, the way we're going to do that is through research, you know, finding out a better way to do something, leveraging things that we already know, and how can we do it even better. And that's why I think research is so important. And, uh, you know, I really appreciate your foundation looking into this. And I hope we get more foundations across McLaren doing the same thing. Absolutely. Well, thank you both so much for your time. I so appreciate it. Um, I'm so excited for our community to learn more about McLaren's research program. Um, and I am now going to turn it back over to Nicole uh, to see if we have received any questions during the live webinar um, that one of us might address. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Dr. McKenna. I can't agree with you more. I think that the research that McLaren's doing is going to benefit generations to come. So I hope that everybody on this call um, enjoyed what you guys had to say. I thought it was extremely educational for anybody uh, listening in. So um, I really think it's important and I hope you can highlight the research that McLaren is doing on COVID-19. Um, you know, obviously it's timely with what, what's up going on in our world and um, I, I think it's important for everybody to understand. So if you guys could just touch on that a little bit. Well, maybe I'll set the stage a little differently than just mentioning a clinical trial. So there we are, all of a sudden this, this horrible curse called COVID comes on board and we suddenly are put into a situation of where we're shutting down the hospital. We have unbelievable amounts of people that require intensive care units we have death rates going through the ceiling. You know, several of our hospitals, just like you may have heard, you know, we had to get semis, refrigerated semis, because we had so many people dying. And our response was unbelievable. We were able to staff these areas, get our clinicians to uh, be right in the forefront of this stuff. And we basically had a couple of choices. One is just keep doing what we're doing and hope that everything goes okay, or, we found with a lot of our clinicians, they were very interested in how can we get better outcomes? Wanted to know what's being done nationally, what sort of treatments are being tried. And more importantly, we had numerous sites that have requested to be part of clinical trials and things like um, the plasma infusion from, you know, as a recovery, people who recover from COVID using plasma infusion, trials of uh, remdesivir and other types of medications. And then I know specifically at Lansing, uh, they were part of what we call, it was a TIMI, which is a interventional cardiology organization, a trial on the use of anticoagulants and what is better, what type of anticoagulation profile is better for people with COVID. And this became a landmark study and helped to define how you should anticoagulate people with COVID because nobody knew going into it, did you need to anticoagulate people with COVID? What we found was people were having unusual, complex, and many frequent types of, of, of blood clots. And so it appeared that uh, COVID by itself was a problem with excessive clotting. And so people started saying, well, how should we do it? What sort of doses should we use? And how should we go about this? So Lansing was part of a trial uh, that went through, put patients into different treatment arms uh, and then uh, uh, tracked how they did so that a decision could be made very quickly as to what's the appropriate treatment algorithm for people who come in with COVID. And yes, it made a difference. I mean, we, it went back and forth as to how we should do it. It was only by doing these trials uh, that we were able to find out what would seem to be the appropriate way. And so lives were saved and disabilities were prevented because we had enough people in the midst of this horrible pandemic where people 
you know, would come to work and were wondering, are they going to catch it and die? They were still encouraged to do research and said, we're going to beat this and we're going to find a better way to treat it. And that's the type of response we had, not only at Lansing, but at multiple other areas. And that's how we were able to leverage research into clinical outcomes and make a difference in people's lives. Wonderful. That's amazing. All right, well, we cannot thank you enough for joining us. I will make one last plug for our Cocktails for a Cause event that's coming up on Thursday, October 14th at the Country Club of Lansing. Um, as Lynn mentioned, all of the proceeds from the event will go to funding research that will benefit our community. Well, that's you can great. buy tickets. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I think that's great. That's wonderful. Yeah. Like yeah, absolutely. Well, we've been talking to our donors about this opportunity and we're getting a lot of positive feedback. So I think this is just the start of great things to come. So um, you can buy tickets still at mglcampaignforcare.com. And I am so excited to announce our October webinar will feature our brand new fundraising program. We've started a women's giving circle. Um, so stay tuned as we announce the date for that soon. Happy Tuesday and have a great rest of your day. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.